What in the world is going on with AEM gauges? Stick around. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage and there's been some changes over the last couple years on AEM gauges. Some of you might know that AEM got bought out by Holly. I have my speculations as to why that is. Mainly, Holly's wideband controllers are junk and they were hoping to possibly kind of sort their stuff up by bringing a company in that really specializes in wideband controllers. While offering mini gauges, standalone stuff like that, the Awego AFR gauges is really where AEM shines. Now, as I've said in the past, this is my preferred gauge out there. I know a lot of you may disagree with me. I don't care. I don't care. What I like about AEM gauges in particular is they give us an opportunity to bring in our wideband data without using uh, analog data. Analog data is terrible on a vehicle. When you're trying to bring in a one to five volt or something like that signal in a vehicle filled with those, it has a tendency to get skewed. Your data is not reliable. So even on the older 300 and the 30, whatever it was, four something, blah, 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 you could use a serial. Now this happens to be the CAN bus unit that plugs right into the OBD2 port and creates a device on HP tuners. But that's neither here nor there. The question that I've seen lately since the acquisition by Holly is, why am I getting junk sensors? I used to get Bosch authentic sensors with these. So I bought this one off of Amazon. Amazon's a crapshoot. AEM tells you, make sure that your gauge is not a counterfeit. Now, Listen, I don't necessarily buy into this whole thing that there's a huge counterfeit ring uh, making AEM wideband gauges out there to undermine AEM and stuff like that. Part of me thinks that AEM just has some junk that goes out and they want to blame it on counterfeit. So let's open this thing up. Let's take a look at what's inside. Hopefully, I've got my B cam over here so we can get a closer look at some of this stuff and see what's going on. Right away, our gauge is kind of just not in there. So, if we look at this, there's no signs that I don't, I just, I don't see somebody making this as counterfeit. It's such a well made little unit. That's what I like about them. They're so thin. <sighs> but let's get to the meat and potatoes of it specifically into the wideband sensor. And we should know pretty quick whenever we get to that point. There's our, o, our OBD2 cable. There's our bung, our rubber band, and some butt splices. The rubber band is for retention of the gauge in certain gauge housings. Here's our extension cable for our OBD2. Uh, documentation. It's probably a good sign whenever it has documentation like this that it is not going to be counterfeit. I don't think that counterfeiters would go about putting documentation, much less with a QR code to the instructions for this unit. And this is just sales literature. We get our gauge and interestingly enough, we have a Bosch wideband sensor. Let me preface this by saying, here's the other screw for our gauge retainer. Let me preface this by saying that just because we got a Bosch in this one doesn't mean that this unit hasn't been sitting on the shelf for a while. I don't know if there's a manufacturer date on these things. I don't think there is. Uh, so I can't promise you that gauges that are going out right now are going to include a Bosch Authentic O2 sensor. But it is good to see this one that was bought in 2024 uh, has it. So I would think that anything that you buy in 2024 should have a Bosch sensor. Now, I want you to hit up the comments if you buy an AEM gauge 
and you are specifically if you bought one recently like from whenever this video is posted and, and on and you got any sensor besides a Bosch uh, wideband sensor. Same way it goes with any Holly EFI system. If you have recently purchased a Holly EFI system, let me know if it comes with a Bosch. I, I kind of want to get an idea of what's going on there. Now, if you bought a Holly EFI like a turbine or something last year, I wouldn't expect it to come with this. I think Holly uh, did what they always have done and went out and bought a contract for a bunch of cheap wideband sensors. And that's what you get with a lot of their stuff. Don't buy into this crap that you have to have a Holly specific sensor to work with your uh, setups. Kind of the same thing with this. Like AEM says you need to use an AEM wideband sensor because there's a resistor in here that's calibrated. All Bosch wideband sensors have that. Uh, so if you're buying Bosch, you're buying the same thing. But even the knockoff wideband sensors, I don't have an issue running them. Uh, you know, if I burn up a $30 sensor, I don't have any heartburn of throwing a $30 sensor away and throwing another one on there. If I burn up a $200 sensor or a $150 sensor, I start to get a little bit uh, weary. Now, what can you do about that? If I, I would say if you're going to be tuned in a new platform, maybe use one of the cheap sensors and whenever you start getting the fuel closer, flip it over to the authentic Bosch unit and go from there with this. If it's an unknown entity, you've just built a motor, you're throwing boost at it, you're overfueling it for safety, maybe don't throw in the expensive sensor and foul it out or you know shock it, thermal shock it right away. Save it for a good day. But I'm glad to see, as of at least my kit, that everything that came in the box looks authentic. We've got the good sensor in it, and hopefully you guys are experiencing the same thing. So as I've always said, I want you to hit up the comments because I'm really interested to see your feedback. I don't want feedback on glow shift, Ballinger, Innovate, all that stuff. Listen, I know everybody has different opinions. Most people like Ballinger. I don't like Ballinger. I'll talk about that later on. But I'm not a fan of Ballinger for multiple reasons. I'm not saying that they don't make good equipment. That's not it. But I have some reasons behind disliking it and I have some reasons behind liking this platform. I'm also going to uh, shoot a video once I get this installed in the Silverado, going through the setup on this with the scanner because I still get lots of people asking me, how do I get this to read in on my scanner? There is an old video out there from AEM. I think it's time to update that. And so keep your eyes peeled for that. But for now, I wanna thank you for stopping by the garage. Remember, ABT, always be tuning.